Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel and our today topic is infective endocarditis. So if we look at the endocarditis, endocarditis mean inflammation of the endocardium. As we know the heart consists of three walls. The endocardium which is the innermost, myocardium which is the middle and muscular layer and the outermost is pericardium. So whenever this endocardium get inflamed we call it endocarditis. But if this uh, inflammation is infective origin then we call it infective endocarditis. For if we analyze the most common type of infective endocarditis which is a subacute type. So if let, let, let me explain the pathogenesis of subacute infective endocarditis because that is the most common one. So for that we need bacteremia and heart disease to get the infective endocarditis. I should say the subacute one but as a, as a journal I will discuss it is a infective endocarditis. So for example if this is a cell of a endocardium and this cell is if we look for example I, I denoted this is an abnormality in the uh, heart cell which is endocardium part. So if the abnormality present in the endocardium or I should say in the heart and somehow the bacteria get into the blood which is called bacteremia. Either it is because of the IV injections or IV catheterizations or some direct surgeries or dental problems like dental caries if someone have. So these all are causes of bacteremia. Through this the bacteria can enter into our bloodstream. And now for example we have a heart defect like congenital heart disease, rheumatic heart disease or cardiomyopathies or hypertensive cardiomyopathies even MI is there, any cardiac abnormality if present and on top there is bacteremia. So for example this bacteria come into the blood circulation. Now this will come to the heart. So whenever they come here they attach with the uh, inner lining of the endocardium. So whenever one bacteria attach here most of bacteria they come together and they get attached to each other and on top there is fibrin depositions or I should say collagen deposition. So they make a very uh, tough structure and which is we which we call vegetations. So these vegetation is a responsible for the uh, all pathogenesis because this uh, mm, uh, vegetation they restrict the valve activity which is uh, like for example if the mitral wall is uh, get infected so the mitral wall will lose its function and most commonly it will uh, cause regurgitation or we can say there will be mitral wall prolapse also can be there. So these vegetation can also even detach during the contractility of the contraction of the heart. This vegetation can detach from this uh, muscle or I should say this layer and can go can get to any part of the body. Now if we look the classification of infective endocarditis. One is acute infective endocarditis and another is subacute infective endocarditis. As I discussed the uh, pathogenesis of infective endocarditis, this is largely applicable for the subacute uh, infective endocarditis. But in acute infective endocarditis, which is uh, for, for that responsible organism is Staphylococcus aureus, which is a very uh, like lethal organism. For Staph aureus or for Staphylococcus aureus, the heart defect is not necessary. If this uh, staphoreus get into the blood, it can even uh, damage the normal heart and can cause the infective endocarditis. So this point should be uh, remember. Another, let, let, let's differentiate these two. First is acute and another is uh, subacute. On the base of the severity, we divide these two. So for this, for acute staph, Staphylococcus aureus is responsible and for subacute the Staphylococcus viridens and this is the most common organism which causes infective endocarditis is an important point to remember for MCQ's uh, purpose. Staph aureus is present in the skin it is normal floor of the skin while the Streptococcus uh, viridens is normal floor of the mouth. 
stiff. Phylococcus oris is very uh, has virulency is very high because it can uh, that's why it can uh, damage the normal heart as well. On the other hand, viridens is not very like that much virulent. They may, they uh, stephorius make a very large vegetation and uh, streptococcus viridens make small vegetation. And the valve damage they uh, infect the damage wall, but stephorius can uh, infect the damage wall as well as the uh, healthy wall and can cause a severe destruction of a dead wall. Most commonly, the mitral wall get uh, get damaged mitral valve, but as well as aortic valve. I mean, I mean to say the aortic valve. I mean to say the lift uh, walls of the lift heart get uh, severely damaged in the infective endocarditis. But one important point to remember, if infective endocarditis occur in the drug abuser, then the most common valve uh, get involved is tricuspid valve. Otherwise, they, the mitral and the aortic valve uh, are important in infective endocarditis to get damage. But in IV uh, drug abuser, tricuspid valve usually get damage. Now, if we look at to the other causes of infective endocarditis, there is Staphylococcus epidermitis. Now, this one is important because it can damage the prosthetic valve. Now, if a patient have prosthetic wall before and he complain of infective endocarditis think of stiff epidermitis now streptococcus boys and fecalis and fecalis as well fecalis. if someone have some uh, serious colorectal diseases like if there is colon cancer colon carcinoma or if there is uh, IBD is inflammatory bubble disease. So if these patients come with the infective endocarditis, think of Streptococcus bovis and Fecalis. Because these uh, two organisms, they, they, they usually present in the colon region. So whenever these colon uh, valve get uh, damaged, so these bacteria can cross the uh, wall of the colon and get into the blood and cause infective endocarditis. This is important with MCQ's point of view, Coxella Berniti. Most of the time, the MCQ's come, they say a patient, like there is no not specific history. The only history is that uh, the patient is uh, having kettles, goat, sheep or cow, whatever, but uh, no, not other clear history, only come with such history and uh, with di diagnosed with the uh, infective endocarditis. So think of coxilla burniti because coxilla burniti first infect the animal and from animal these bacteria can come to the bloodstream of the human and can cause infective endocarditis. These two are Hesse group and fungus. These uh, cause infective endocarditis in the immunocompromised patient. This is a specific uh, group of bacteria. These are usually gram-negative bacteria. And they, they stand for uh, like H for Haemophilus influenza, A for aggregate uh, vector, this for cardiobacter, this for echinella, and this for kingella. And another is fungus. Fungus is another uh, also uh, common in immunocompromised patient and another type of patient who's taking a lot of antibiotics so anti the bacteria will be uh, get killed and this fungus can come to the blood and cause uh, infecto endocarditis now if we look at to the clinical feature of course there the, this is infection so there will be fever and look at this this is cardiac murmur this murmur is usually because of the turbulent blood flow when the blood passes through the uh, cardiac valve. So this is a uh, cardiac murmur can be seen in infective endocarditis. This is called a varying murmur also varying murmur because it uh, get changed when the heart uh, suffer infective endocarditis. So it is called varying murmur. Another is Oslar nodes 
genuine lesion ocular nodes are basically a painful lesion on the uh, tip of the fingers and toes which is painful and it is usually because of the septic emboli as we discussed in the pathogenesis their dead vegetation which is septic having bacteria inside that emboli can go to any part of the body and cause infection so this usually come to the tip of the finger and they cause a painful lesion which is called ocular, ocular nodes the genuine lesions and the the sp sorry splinter hemorrhage and ocular nodes they be, are both are because of the uh, septic emboli splinter hemorrhage there is small uh, hemorrhages inside the nail bed genuine lesion and rod spots these are the antigen antibody complex deposition on the uh, this, this this is usually on the skin and this is on the retina so genuine lesion is this is important to remember genuine lesion are painless And there will be clubbing as well. And genuine lesions are painless and erythematous rashes. How we will diagnose the infective endocarditis? There is, there will be. Uh, we should take multiple blood culture because if we take a blood culture, and that time the vegetation uh, are not detached from the heart, so in the blood we will not find any uh, septic. Or we, I should say, we we will not find any bacteria in the blood. So we should take multiple uh, blood sample for the blood culture, and if come positive multiple time, then we can go for a diagnosis. And another is echocardiogram. And this echo, we can look at to the heart valve, and we can uh, see if there is any uh, vegetation. Now, how we will treat it? For treatment, there is prolonged antibiotics because to penetrate that vegetation, to kill that bacteria, we need high doses of antibiotic for a uh, prolonged time. And if the wall is so get uh, damaged, then we need to uh, surgery for the dysfunctional valve. Another uh, word came into my 